What happens when a country tries to infuse massive amounts of money into its economy? Japan embarked on such a journey and today we're going to explore the outcomes. Picture this, Japan, the world's third largest economy grappling with decades of deflation and stagnation. The stage was set for an unprecedented monetary experiment. The government had a clear objective, to kickstart the economy, drive inflation and stimulate growth. Under the stewardship of the Bank of Japan, the country embarked on an ambitious journey in the world of economics. Their weapon of choice? Quantitative easing. Now this isn't your run-of-the-mill economic strategy. Quantitative easing is like turning on the money printing presses, but with a twist. Rather than simply pumping more money into the economy, the central bank purchases long-term securities from the open market. The goal is to lower interest rates and increase the money supply, encouraging lending and investment. But Japan wasn't the first to try this strategy. In the wake of the global financial crisis, both the United States and the United Kingdom had used quantitative easing to stabilize their economies. But Japan's approach was different. It was bigger. It was bolder. The Bank of Japan didn't just turn on the presses, they floored it. The scale was unprecedented. In a single year, the Bank of Japan's balance sheet expanded by a staggering 30% of the country's gross domestic product. To put that into perspective, it's like the United States Federal Reserve pumping out nearly $7 trillion in a year. But this wasn't just about the numbers. It was a statement. A signal to the world that Japan was ready to do whatever it took to revive its economy. The experiment had begun. Japan's money experiment was a bold move in the field of economics. But what were the consequences? The experiment began in earnest in 2013 with a new approach to monetary policy, a strategy that would soon be dubbed as Abenomics, named after the then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. The Bank of Japan, under the leadership of Haruhiko Kuroda, embarked on a bold journey to stimulate the nation's stagnant economy. To understand the implementation, let's break it down. The Bank of Japan significantly increased the money supply, flooding the economy with liquidity. This was accomplished by purchasing government bonds on a massive scale to the tune of 80 trillion yen annually, a figure that's hard to fathom even for the most seasoned economists. This unconventional approach was designed to combat the deflation that had plagued Japan's economy for two decades. The overarching goal was to achieve a 2% inflation target, a figure believed to be a healthy rate for economic growth. Now, the economists around the globe had their eyes set on Japan. Predictions varied widely. Some hailed the approach as a bold and necessary step, a beacon of hope for an economy mired in stagnation. Others, however, were less optimistic, warning of potential risks such as hyperinflation a situation where prices escalate at an uncontrollable rate. Despite these contrasting views, one thing was clear. The Bank of Japan was charting a new course in monetary policy, a course that was untested and full of uncertainties. As the experiment unfolded, the world watched with bated breath, wondering if Japan had found a solution to its economic woes. The results of Japan's money experiment were mixed and sparked a great deal of debate among economists. Let's dive into the outcome, shall we? Firstly, we cannot ignore the impact on inflation. The central bank's aggressive monetary easing was designed to pull Japan out of the deflationary spiral. And yes, it did succeed in halting deflation, but the elusive 2% inflation target still remains a distant dream. Despite the massive injection of money, inflation didn't respond as expected. This begs the question, is it really as simple as printing more money to tackle deflation? Next, let's talk about economic growth. While the experiment did stimulate the economy in the short run, the long-term growth remained sluggish. The GDP growth rate hovered around 1% during the course of the experiment. The growth was hardly the robust recovery that policymakers had hoped for. This goes on to show that monetary policy alone might be insufficient to stimulate long-term economic growth. And then there's the issue of government debt. The experiment significantly increased Japan's government debt, which is now more than 200% of its GDP, the highest in the developed world. The central bank now owns a large portion of this debt, raising concerns about the sustainability of such policies. 
Of course, opinions on the success of the experiment are varied. Some economists argue that Japan's money experiment was a necessary step to combat deflation and stimulate the economy. Others, however, contend that the costs, particularly the ballooning government debt, outweigh the benefits. While the experiment had some positive effects, it also led to unforeseen challenges. The journey of Japan's money experiment serves as a reminder that while unconventional monetary policies can be powerful tools, they are not without risks and limitations. By the end of 2023, Japan's massive money experiment came to a close. But what did it leave in its wake? The experiment, in essence, was an ambitious attempt to stimulate the economy through aggressive monetary easing. However, it wasn't without its share of challenges. The reasons for the conclusion of the experiment were multifold. For one, the experiment was met with a plateau in its effectiveness. The anticipated surge in economic activity didn't materialize to the extent hoped for. Add to that, the risks associated with the experiment began to outweigh the benefits. Concerns over the potential for asset bubbles and the strain on banks due to low interest rates started to cast a long shadow over the experiment's initial optimism. The immediate aftermath of the experiment's end was a period of adjustment and recalibration. The Bank of Japan had to carefully navigate the process of normalizing monetary policy without triggering market volatility or hampering economic recovery. This delicate balancing act was a test of the central bank's acumen and agility. Fast forward to the current economic situation in Japan and the experiment's influence is still palpable. While the experiment didn't trigger the economic boom it aimed for, it did help stabilize the economy and fend off deflation. It's also important to note that the experiment has left Japan with a hefty public debt, which is a challenge the nation continues to grapple with. Moreover, the experiment has catalyzed a shift in the broader economic discourse in Japan. It has spurred conversations about the need for structural reforms beyond monetary policy to invigorate the economy. This includes everything from labor market reforms to measures aimed at boosting productivity and fostering innovation. In the grand scheme of things, the end of the experiment wasn't so much a full stop as it was a comma. It marked the transition from one economic strategy to another, informed by the lessons of the past and the challenges of the future. The end of the experiment marked a new chapter in Japan's economic journey. So, what can we learn from Japan's massive money experiment? And what does it mean for the future of global economics? The first lesson we can draw from this experiment is the resilience of an economy. Despite the unprecedented scale of the experiment, Japan's economy showed remarkable adaptability, illustrating the robustness of well-established economic structures. This resilience is a critical factor to consider for other nations contemplating similar bold moves. Secondly, the experiment underscores the importance of timing in economic policies. The impact of Japan's money experiment was significantly influenced by external factors such as global market trends and geopolitical events. This highlights that even the most meticulously designed policies can be subject to the unpredictability of the global economic landscape. Thirdly, the experiment revealed the potential dangers of over-reliance on monetary policy to stimulate economic growth. While the initial impact was positive over time, the benefits diminished, indicating that such a strategy should be part of a broader, more comprehensive approach to economic revitalization. The future implications of Japan's experiment are manifold. For one, it provides a blueprint for other countries considering similar strategies. Policymakers can draw on Japan's experience to better anticipate potential challenges and craft more effective policies. Moreover, the experiment has the potential to reshape global economic discourse. It challenges traditional economic wisdom and opens up new avenues for exploration. For instance, it elicits questions about the role of central banks, the nature of money and the dynamics of inflation and deflation. Lastly, the experiment may spur innovation in economic policy making. Drawing from Japan's experience, policymakers might be inspired to develop novel strategies that blend monetary, fiscal and structural policies in unprecedented ways. In conclusion, Japan's money experiment serves as a compelling case study in economics. 
offering valuable insights for policymakers around the world. Whether these lessons will be heeded or disregarded remains to be seen. But one thing is certain, the experiment has irrevocably expanded the boundaries of economic thought and practice.